Upper eye lift type and under eye wrinkles, bags, dark circles treatment. I am a 40 year old Korean female interested in an eye lift. Photo number one is what my eyes look like normally, without smiling. I am interested in an eye lift of the upper eyelids so that they look closer to photo number two. One surgeon recommended a traditional blepharoplasty. The other recommended a brow lift. Which one is right? Photo number three is when I'm smiling. Do I need plastic surgery to minimize the under eye wrinkles, bags, dark circles? Or is there another option? Thank you for your question. You state in your question that you're 40 years old, Korean female, and you've submitted s several photos. One, the first photo at rest, the second photo with your eyebrows raised, third photo, smiling or facial expression. And you are in a, you've gone to a couple of doctors, and what you want is the appearance of photo number two. One doctor recommended eyelid surgery, the other doctor recommended brow lift, so you want to know which one is correct. And then you go on to ask about the under eye area as well. So I'll certainly give you my impression based on the photos you submit and the question you're asking. And I'll help you distinguish on what you can expect with either of these procedures. A little bit of background, I'm a board certified cosmetic surgeon, fellowship trained oculofacial plastic and reconstructive surgeon. I've been in practice in Manhattan and Long Island for over 20 years. I specialize in Asian eyelid surgery amongst many other things that we do in our practice. And this type of question does come up a lot. And so I will distinguish for you how I would interpret the desire that you have to look like photo number two. So what you what appears to be the situation when you do when you show photo number two is that you I think that what you like is the the impression of the shape of the eyes when your eyebrows are raised. So when you look at the first photo, the eyelid skin is hooded a little bit more and that shape of that hood dominates the appearance of the eyes. When you raise your eyebrows, the shape of the skin that's overlapping is shifted, shifted upwards, and then the eye shape has a different appearance. That being said, I would ask you the question first is, do you want your eyebrows higher? And that's a very, very important question. From my perspective, your eyebrows are in a natural position and where they should be. I would not, I would respectfully disagree with the colleague who recommends the eyebrow lift because it is my feeling that eyebrow lifts are often done too aggressively and it results in people who have normal eyebrows looking like they're perpetually surprised. Now that's an aesthetic judgment, an aesthetic style. If your goal is to really have that shape, that shape is somewhat achievable with eyelid surgery. Now that means you and the prospective doctor have to really agree upon how much skin you will want to leave behind in order to get that shape. What I routinely do when I speak to patients about Asian eyelid surgery is I use a, a, a simple instrument like a Q-tip and I'll fold the skin inward to show what the shape will look like. It is not uncommon for people to want a very conservative result where they just have just a little bit of eyelid showing. A lot of people want a well-defined double eyelid other people want a more subtle double eyelid. I think that if that is the goal, then you can probably achieve that goal with eyelid surgery. Now, when it comes to Asian eyelid surgery, the decision point is often based on the desired outcome and then the presence or absence of excess skin, excess fat. Generally, with someone who has a fair amount of skin but who wants a conservative approach, I've been able to do this procedure with what's called a non-incisional Asian blepharoplasty. 
What non-incisional blepharoplasty means is basically little openings are made in the skin. Skin is not removed and the skin is anchored to the muscle called the levator muscle. That means then that the skin folds at a higher place. I would suspect in this situation you're in now, the skin doesn't really fold but kind of rolls passively and therefore you, the rolling of the skin goes over the, uh, on top of the eyelashes and dominates the shape of the eyes. If that skin were fixated a little bit higher, it would probably reveal the shape of photo number two. The other option, if there is a presence of excess skin, is called an excisional or incisional type of blepharoplasty. That means so an incision is made and, ex and some skin is removed. Typically, it's very conservative. It's no more than a few millimeters. And last but not least, if there's any fat, which in, from my impression with the photos, doesn't look like you have, then fat can be addressed at the same time. Now, as far as the lower eyelids are concerned, yes, when you, when you, when you look at photo number one, there appears to be some fat pockets that are pushing forward. So in a situation like that, with your type of skin type, I generally do what's called it's a transconjunctival blepharoplasty. What that means is I go from the inside of the eyelid to reduce the fat pockets that's causing puffiness. Now, to address skin quality, which is part of what you are dealing with when you show photo number three, your skin is folding and, and you have some lines. Well, there's a couple of ways to address that. One is to address the activity of the muscle, which causes those lines, the orbicularis oculi muscle, that's a muscle around the eyes that causes, when contracted, when you smile, cause these lines, often referred to as crow's feet lines. We treat that with Botox, and that relaxes those muscles. We improve skin quality with a combination of something called platelet-rich plasma, which is derived from your own blood and used to stimulate the collagen, and basically the goal is to improve the backbone of the skin, the dermis of the skin, so that the skin doesn't wrinkle as much. Understand that you'll always have some wrinkling when you smile. It's very natural and it's appropriate, but to kind of prevent the lines from getting too deep, especially when you're at rest, when we refer to as static lines, a program of Botox and skin quality improvement is certainly an option. In addition, there are thermal energy-based devices that can help tighten that skin. And usually for someone with Asian skin, I go towards the radiofrequency treatments, such as what we have in our office called Pelave, to help tighten the skin. But that's also dependent, again, on where in the hierarchy of importance these things, these, these concerns fall. So, I think it's important that you have this discussion with your doctors and look at yourself with your eyebrow raised. If you look, if you focus not on the appearance of the shape of the eyes, but the shape of the whole facial expression, I should say, or the, or the appearance of the facial expression, I think you won't want to have your eyebrows that high up. If you do, well then you should certainly move forward with the brow lift, but I think you'll probably be most likely um, better off with the upper eyelid surgery as well as possibly lower eyelid surgery. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck and thank you for your question. Mm -hmm.